So hi everyone, namaste, welcome to another video. So in this video, we'll be discussing about a few important things uh, you need to do once you arrive here in UK as a student uh, through student visa. So yeah, first of all, a massive congratulations to all the students who have got their tier for visa or student visa to come and study here in UK. A massive well done to you. Uh, since it's a decision that you should be really proud of since you have made a decision to come and you know come out of your comfort zone come into a different world totally independent totally by yourself that's a decision that you should be really proud on and yeah there are a few things that you need to do uh, once you arrive here in UK I very much remember the first day I landed here in Heathrow I was very much nervous and very much excited at the same time since that that was my first international visit and that was my all alone as well so yeah when, once i arrived here in uk uh, i was slightly nervous and excited at the same time but yeah uh, in order for you to not be the same i have compiled a few lists uh, made, made a compilation a few lists uh, in order for you to not be the same so yeah starting with uh, the first thing uh, once you arrive here in uk uh, definitely you will be going to your accommodation but the day after you uh, go into your accommodation you settle and you know you unpack your everything the first thing you need to do is visit your uh, university uh, and complete your enrollment so once you are in your home country your enrollment is only half half done so only your enrollment will only get complete once you arrive here in UK and you get the Vignette stamp in your passport so yeah, once you are here, just visit uh, your university. There will be a section called Ask for Help. Go in there and complete your enrollment. And also you need to also receive your student ID as well. So the first step would be to complete your enrollment and to receive your student ID straight after you uh, arrive in UK. So the second most important thing uh, once you arrive here in UK would be to collect your BRP, which is often called Biometric Residence Permit, which is a visa for your stay, uh, for for your stay during your study tenure. So it might be of three years, four years, depending on your uh, study length. And so yeah, when you were filing for your visa, uh, you were given a choice whether to receive your BRP from nearest post office or your university uh, address. So yeah, if you have a chosen address as your nearest post office, you need to visit your uh, post office within a week after you land here in UK. You can definitely find a nearest post office in your Google and you know get the direction and go to the post office and check for it. Or if you have chosen university ad address like what I did, it might take a few longer days, you know, a few more days uh, than what uh, it take for it to arrive at post office. So I was not aware about the process uh, you know you need in order for you to receive BRP from university I was just waiting and waiting but uh, I came to know about the visa compliance team through one of my uh, network so uh, if you have chosen a BRP address to be collected from university you need to get in touch with university compliance team you need to write an email to them they will conduct a short interview or a short you know meeting with you in order for you to release your BRP since uh, it's a form of a security uh, questioning and all so yeah you need to get in touch with your visa compliance team of your university in order to receive your BRP if you have chosen university as your uh, collection address so the next important thing once you arrive here in UK would be to register yourself with GP or general practitioner are often called hospital or you know pharmacy so when you are applying for a UK student visa you were pay you have already made a payment of health surcharge or health insurance so which is uh, definitely which is indeed for the GP so yeah you need to get in uh, you need to get in register with your nearest GP so whenever you feel ill or whenever you are not feeling well you can always visit the GP since you have made the payment and yeah you can always go to GP you can get the pre-treatment and all that's very much important step to get registered with your GP and the other most important thing definitely is to get in UK bank account after you arrive in here so you've got uh, two options for a bank account one is an online bank like Starlink or Monzo which is very much simple to get a bank account and the other one is physical bank account like uh, Santander, uh, Lloyd's or Barclays 
So uh, depending on what sort of bank account you like, you can either apply for online one. Like I said, it's very simple uh, to get that one. You just need to download an application, fill a really simple form, and yeah, your debit card will get delivered to your address within two to three working days. And the other one, the physical one, uh, which is slightly uh, more of a process. So you need to visit your university, get an uh, address, and to get a recommendation letter from university as a proof of address and you need to visit the bank you need to fill the form and only like your debit card will get delivered uh, in your address within three to four working days so yeah you can get any of the bank account whether it's online or physical bank account it does the same thing and another most important thing after you arrive will be to get a uk sim card so uh, you can uh, get a sim card in once you arrive here in UK in the airport or after you successfully moved into your city, whichever city that might be. And in terms of SIM card as well, we've got loads and loads of options from Levara to 3 to EE to O2. You can, you know, get a SIM card that best fits you. So yeah, it's not like the one Levara is better than 3 or 3 is better than O2. Everything works the same. You can pick whatever you want, depending on your budget, how much you want to pay monthly. And another foremost important would be to apply for national insurance if you are planning to work part time. Since an international student is entitled to work 20 hours during part time, a term time, and 40 hours during their break time. So yeah, in order for you to work part time, you need a comp you compulsory need a national insurance number. So in order for you get to get a national insurance number you need to visit a uh, gov.uk website which is a government website here in UK so there will be uh, all the information in there to how, to how to get a national insurance number you need to fill a form and you need to post that form to post office and that might take uh, at least six weeks for you to get a national insurance number like I said it's very much compulsory for you to get national insurance number if you are planning to work part-time here in UK so this step might be an optional or this might not require to some of the people coming from some country or and but it might require to students who might be coming from some countries like i'm from india i do not i was not required to do this step so which is police verification or registration with police uh, so students uh, coming from different countries have different rules so since i am from india so this step was not necessary for me but uh I've got a friend from China who visited nearest police station, got himself registered with the nearest police station. That's for security reason as well. So yeah, uh, make sure uh, you read the list of things that you need to complete uh, depending on the country you are from. So this step is a bonus uh, tip that I'm giving to all the students coming in here. So this is to you know visit your university. There will be a team in your university for career guidance and career counseling. Get in touch, get an appointment with the team, get in touch with them, uh, you know, uh, work on your CV with them. Uh, since you need a UK standard CV in order for you to get a job in here, so get in touch with uh, your career counseling or, uh, you know, career guidance team in your university, get your CV checked, get your CV finalized, make sure your CV is in UK standard format that would, uh, you know, boost your chance in order for you to uh, land a part time job. This is a bonus tip since I'm sharing it with you. I wasn't aware of this uh, since you guys are lucky that you are you know getting this information on the very first uh, day one you once you are here in UK so once you've got the CV in your uh, UK standard format you can uh, start applying for part-time jobs in online uh, you know online application like indeed which is the most used uh, platform here in UK so yeah you can start uh, building your CV you can start applying to job uh, through indeed or you can do door-to-door -door application go to nearest you know retail shop or go to nearest restaurant drop your CV in there so once they've got vacancy they will uh, ring you back or mail you back on the information that you have provided so these are the important things that you need to do once you are here in UK. If you enjoy the video, make sure you give a thumbs up to the video and click the subscribe button. Uh, so that would give me motivation to bring such videos in coming days. And that would also uh, let the YouTube algorithm know that I exist. So thanks for watching the video. I will be back very soon. Till then, cheers. Bye bye.